You've probably seen the ads for GLP-1s. The hormone helps people lose weight, but the results are not one size fits all. Dr. Noor Khan from UPMC is help, uh, here to help us understand all of this. And I feel like right now, more so than ever, doctor, we are getting information from yeah. every side, That's right. from a medical point of view, and then almost like a boutique point of view with all the different sites that are selling it. Mm -hmm. But what at its core is a GLP-1 and what does it do? Great, thank you for the question. So G we have something called GLP-1 receptors all over the body. They're in the brain, they're in the gut, they're in the pancreas, they're in other tissues too. So what these medications do is they bind to these receptors and at all of these different sites, they have certain actions. So if you're interested in weight loss, for example, they might bind to receptors in the stomach and actually slow down stomach emptying after a meal, leading you to stay full longer but more importantly for weight loss, what we're seeing is actually their effect on the brain. Mm. So they act on the brain, on GLP-1 receptors in the appetite centers, and they reduce appetite, they reduce hunger. And this allows people to have more control over their eating behavior. Interestingly, we're also seeing that they act on the reward centers in the brain. So we actually find people who are taking these medications are able to cut down on tobacco use, and are able to cut down on alcohol use, wow. along with reducing the food cravings for sugar, for uh, junk food. So this is all happening all over the body, and I haven't even gotten into the anti-inflammatory, kidney, heart beneficial effects of these medications. It, it does seem like, I mean, I don't want to label something as a miracle drug, but it does seem like it's checking all of these boxes and things, not even weight related, but all of these other areas as well. I've also heard from a number of people though, depending on which medication you get, there are varying side effects. Um, some people mm -hmm. will have some nausea so associated with it or mm -hmm. some other side effects. So what do those look like? Yes, so there are side effects like there are with any medication. And most commonly we see the stomach related side effects like you mentioned, nausea, diarrhea, constipation. But if you work with your doctor and you go up slowly and you're also making sure that you're following an appropriate diet, mm -hmm. eating at the right time, eating the right amount, you can really minimize these side effects. I have not had to stop these medications because Wonderful. of stomach side effects in, I think maybe two or three patients out of 200 or 300, right. that's it. Wow. And they've been around for 20 years for di diabetes. So it, they are safe medications. I'm comfortable using them. Right. As long as I have patients who are willing to work with me and if you are, on these medications, make sure you talk to your doctors about how to minimize side effects. And good. that's a great um, segue into my next question as well, because I know that myself on social media, all over the radio, TV, you're inundated with these different ads from these different companies that sell compounded medication. Uh -huh. What's the difference and when should someone go one way or the other? Yeah, so I actually do not support using compounded medications when my patients talk to me about this. And the reason for that is I have no idea what they're going to get right. in that compounded medication pen. We do know that sometimes it's not even the medication. There are actually some case reports of people getting insulin in the pen. Oh, wow. And ending up with life-threatening low sugars. Yeah. Uh, also, there may be too little or too much of the medication, or the type of molecular semaglutide or tizepatide or liraglutide in that compounded medication may actually be a little different from what is safely being shown to work in large populations. So that's why I'm not in favor of using compounded medications. I, I really want to talk about some of the other benefits. I mean, you, you touched on some of the tobacco and alcohol cravings being reduced. Mm -hmm. I know some people, there have been amazing articles written about food noise, mm -hmm. a term that we had not really used up yes. until yes. the popularity of all of this, that going away for a lot of people, high blood pressure coming down. I yes. mean, all of these really positive benefits too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So um, unfortunately, we still think of obesity as a lifestyle choice and a personal failing. It is not. There is increased hunger. There is increased appetite. Telling someone who's hungry all the time to just not eat is unrealistic. Right. So what these medications do, and older medications also, is that they really work on that hunger drive. That food noise magically goes away. People are no longer spending hours of their days trying to figure out what to eat, what's healthy, trying to avoid the unhealthy stuff. Now they can just focus on eating what's right for them 
and living and moving in a way that's right for them. So that really frees our patients up. And like you mentioned, yes, there are other benefits from these medications. So patients who might have already had heart attacks, strokes, have vascular problems, have certain types of kidney problems, certain types of liver problems, or even sleep apnea that's not responding to treatment, these medications are shown to work for them. It's fantastic. Oh, we love that. Thank you for coming on thank and telling you. us a little bit more about I feel like so many people have questions Absolutely. and they just don't know where to turn. So thank you for coming on and helping us out. Thank you. Learn more about UPMC's Center for Obesity Medicine by visiting our website. You can go to kdka.com slash talkpittsburgh.